Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Great League, showcasing another very powerful team featuring Quagsire! Quagsire on team number one from my top three best teams for Quagsire in the Great League. It will be serving as the closer on team number one for Quagsire. Very powerful, very much suited as a closer, and that Mud Bomb um, addition to its move pool was amazing. And also on this team, on the Safe Swap, Metacham! A lot, um, a lot more powerful as a safe swap in the open Great Lake for season 15 as the Trevenants have been pushed out of the meta with the uh, Seed Bomb nerf. So Metachamp, a lot more free uh, to uh, come in as a safe swap and absolutely put in work. And also on this team, Knocked Owl. Knocked Owl protects Quagsire from the counter users as uh, Quagsire doesn't like the counter users the fast mid pressure is a, just a little bit too oppressive and uh knockdown also protects metacham from the sable eyes that are still lurking in the meta one thing about team number one for quagsire is it absolutely handles the sable eye double steel line beautifully and here we go nido queen newly buffed somewhat buffed slight buff let's say on uh, poison fang and um, we're going to just get, look to put some early pressure here on the Nido Queen. Sky Attack doesn't KO, but it does quite a bit, drawing an early shield from the Nido Queen. And uh, you always want to let the first Poison Fang go. They did not bother building up to a potential Stone Edge, so no need to shield. And they make an aggressive play into an Umbreon. So uh, we're going to meet this with our Metacham. Of course, we are doing uh, super effective damage with our counters. And Umbreon can actually force a shield in this matchup here. That's the power of Umbreon in the Ultra League. That tank, uh, that, that, the tanky uh, nature of Umbreon is just off the charts. And uh, just going to slowly but surely chip away with the combination of the counters and the ice punches. Of course, Psychic is double resisted. You never, ever want to throw that on a dark type. And uh, I'm going to go for the ice punch here on the CMP tie here. That is the most efficient way to throw. Um, they are not sneaking through a move if you can pull that off. And we do. Gonna shield this. We are getting quite low. Like I said, Umbreon can force a shield off of Metacham here. And they aggressive swap back into the Nido Queen, giving us a switch. So that is beautiful. We will gladly take that. Likely because they realized it was not gonna happen for them. So they just elected to rip the band-aid off. Little did they know we had a Quagsire lurking in the back for this Nido Queen here. And they are resigned to just going straight Poison Fang, but that is resisted with our ground typing. It's not going to help them one bit. Going to go for the newly buffed Mud Bomb, making it uh, quite effective here. Super effective to be exact, taking out the Nido Queen. And they've got a Scrafty in the back, so we are looking really good here. They're running the classic um, uh, Poison Double Dark line from seasons ago. Um, not sure if they saw my top five best teams for the Great League, but, um, I did have a Poison Double Dark, but instead of Nido Queen, I had, um, Toxapex with these, uh, two Dark types behind it. But I digress. We are back in on our meta jam. They go for the resisted power punch. Gonna chip it with an ice punch and look to go to work with our super effective counters. Their counters are boosted and we're still hanging in there long enough to really put in work. And uh, yeah, we got that wing attack through. So gonna shield up the foul play here. They're only making it to one move. No reason for them not to throw it. And this is looking like nighty night sleep tight. Umbreon needs two moves to uh, win this and it is not gonna happen. Gonna fire off this sky attack and they shield putting up a fight, but the wing attacks will take out the Umbreon. Knocked Owl, uh, left standing in the end, close strong. That's gonna be a good game, well played. Team number one for my top three best teams for Quagsire, likely the best Quagsire team you can run in the Great League. And here we go. This is why we got Knocked Owl on the lead. They safe swap Sand Slash. This is why Sand Slash is not a safe, safe swap, my friends. Please do not safe swap it. You either lead with it or you close with it. For this reason right here, they just get pounded into the ground. They did go drill run, and if you're wondering why, that does do more DPE. So that is the right move to throw in that circumstance. They were only making it to one move. And of course, as expected, they come back in with the Sableye. So just going to throw this Ice Punch. And I don't anticipate us making it to a second one. The Shadow Claws are just too OP. Uh, but that is okay. Going to bring our Owl back in. And because they got that uh, nice little farm off of us, they will make it to a return. 
But I'm reading that there's another steel type in the back, so we let this go. We take that quite comfortably, no problem. And it's not a second steel type. It wasn't double steel. They got a dugong. It was double ice. So we're going to uh, bring Quagsire in here to put in work, uh, put the pressure on this dugong here. We do tank one icy wind, so we will let that go. And we're going to fire off this stone edge here and see what this dugong wants to do they do shield so they are really fighting us hard what they're doing here is they are obviously preserving their health but i believe their play is to stall the clock and perhaps make a uh, a, a very clutch catch here so uh at the time i wasn't quite um reading that deeply into it as it, this was the last set of the day and um you know how it gets. Look at us throwing on alignment, not throwing with proper timing, and we're paying for it big time. Should, I should have saw that from a mile away. Should not have thrown with awful timing. That's why you don't throw with awful timing, my friends. It can often cost you the game. But we've got an overpowered owl here. We do take out the Sableye, getting some farm. So all we need to do is shield up this Icy Wind. That would uh, come very close, get, get, get us into the uh, very deep red. And at the time, I was thinking maybe I needed a Shadow Ball because they lowered the attack here. Um, so we do go for the Shadow Ball. And I think looking at that, we could have just gone double Sky Attack, even with the debuff. So it's fine. Not the efficient way to tackle that. But we are still saying bye-bye to the Dugong nonetheless. Knocked out, left standing in the end yet again to close the game strong. You absolutely love to see it. Good game, well played. I was absolutely loving the addition of the newly buffed Mud Bomb for Quagsire on team number one here. And here we go. Speaking of buffed Pokemon, we've got one here coming in the form of Togetic. Very nice. Very. I'm definitely going to be giving this a try here soon. Stay tuned for that. But I do know that we tank a couple of these ancient powers. They don't have stab. And we are about as tanky as it gets, uh, even even though it is super effective. What would be bad is if they boosted. That's the That would be the problem. And they do tank our Sky Attack as Togetic, quite tanky. One of the tankier fairies in the meta. And they go for Ancient Power number two. We're not shielding that. And they cannot farm down. They're going to have to throw another one or start giving up some of these shields here as we do threaten the KO. And they are starting to shield. So that is very interesting. Makes me wonder what they have in the back. And they're trying to go for this farm down. That's a tall task with a move like Fairy Wind. It does not apply very much fast move pressure. And they gave up both shields to farm down. That was insane to see. Holy smokes. We'll take that. Going to shield up the potential Dazzling Gleam. There aren't very many things that can one-shot a Metacham, but I do believe Dazzling Gleam is one of them, especially if it has Stab. They tried to catch an Ice Punch onto a Quagsire of their own. Not going to happen. I was expecting that. Uh, so we uh, do hold off and go for that massive Psychic onto the Quagsire. This is not a Shadow, so it does tank quite a bit more damage. 20% more to be exact. And we do tank these mud bombs again. Um, I do believe you really do want a shadow quagsire. I don't happen to have one, but the mud bombs just hit that much harder, as you can imagine, uh, with it being a shadow. Um, but it is not a shadow. So we're going to bring this, bring our own quagsire in to soak this and get ahead on energy. Not sure what they have lurking in the back, but it has no shields. Whatever it is, it has no shields. And it would have to be a chestnut to uh, have any hope of doing anything. It is not a chestnut. It is a uh, shadow alone sand slash. And uh, yeah, again, that's where that shadow bonus missing out on that. That mud bomb would have done a lot more. Would have allowed us to farm down uh, with uh, mud shots thereafter, but uh, not quite. So uh, those are the benefits of the shadow. That's why it's ranked slightly higher. But we're saying bye-bye nonetheless. If you run it back, we paused through in between their shadow claw animation so that they could not catch that resisted damage onto their Togetic. And they're trying to get rid of us. Not going to happen. This is a Quagsire feature, so... We're going to finish it off right with Quagsire with the way overkill Stone Edge on the 5 HP Togetic. Ending it off with a nice fun little BM on Quagsire. Good game. Well played to them. Team number one from my top three best Quagsire teams was, so, was just putting in the work. It's so good. And here we go. Clefable running charm. Hello. 
I don't think they got the memo. Clefable got Fairy Wind. They're still running Charm, and they make a play into an Umbreon. So we do meet this with our Metacham, as we saw in one of the previous battles. Umbreon can force a shield here, but that is not a big deal. And they're running Psychic. Holy smokes. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine running your Umbreon and being completely helpless against an opposing dark type. That sounds like a miserable time to me. My goodness. I gladly TM'd away uh, Psychic. I had a grin from ear to ear TMing away Psychic from my Umbreon. You guys uh, have no idea. Oh my goodness. And they're just going Psychic. I guess trying to debuff us, but you definitely do be do want to be going for the foul play. That Because they kept going Psychic, they were not able to force a shield. And they do come back in with the Clefable. And we farmed down, so... We're only getting a one move, going for this big Psychic, and they do let that go. Beautiful. We've got a shield advantage and loaded energy for this Clefable. Still running Charm. Going to fire off the Sky Attack and see what they want to do. They shield. That's fine. Well, no problem. And um, we they now have no shields. We have two. Uh, so we're going to shield up this uh, potential Meteor Mash here. Quagsire would not appreciate these charms with stabs, so just gonna load up. We can actually farm down, and oh, they got a Shadow Machamp in the back with no shields. Holy smokes, we get to this, and we're saying bye bye to the Shadow Machamp. And we got another one locked and loaded for the low health Clefable. We are also saying bye bye to the Clefable as well. Holy smokes. Quagsire didn't even get to see the field in that one. Uh, knocked out and Metacham going 2v3. You love to see it. Good game, well played. Oh, I was having a blast with team number one for my top three best Quagsire teams. And here we go, Chrysalia. You don't see these too often in the Open Great League. Very interesting. We can, of course, fight back up against this Chrysalia with the threat of super effective Shadow Balls. And we reach our moves at the same time, so uh, no reason not to go Shadow Ball. Grabbing an early shield from the Chrysalia here. That, of course, would hit, hit for super effective as it is a Psychic type. And we do tank a Moonblast, no problem. So uh, we now have an early shield from a very tanky Pokemon. Um, we're looking pretty good here. I was expecting a potential catch, so that's why we didn't throw there. Um, we do go for the extra and going to shield as they are fighting us pretty hard. And they make a play into a Basti. Bastiodon is not a safe swap for this reason, guys. Never, ever safe swap Bastiodon. You either lead with Basti or you close with it. Um, I prefer it as a lead option, but do not ever safe swap a Basti for this reason right here. They go Flamethrower. That did no damage, and we just farm all the way down. That's what you do to Bastiodon if they save swap it and you have a counter user. You farm it all the way down. You don't even throw a move. And they've got a Metacham in the back. They're running ABA Psychic. Hello? What is going on here? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I guess Sableye just does not exist for this trainer. That's okay. We grab a shield. We grab their final shield, and we do get that Psychic through as we did farm the Basti all the way down. So now we can just let this go and preserve the shield for Quagsire. Um, we will need... Oh, they go Ice Punch. And they aggressive swap back into the Chrysalia. So going to fire off this Shadow Ball here. They have no shields. Won't quite KO, but does big damage on the very tanky Chrysalia. And we do make it to the Sky Attack in time. My goodness. Team 1 putting in the work. We are saying bye-bye to the Chrysalia. And they have a Metacham with no shields. We've got a shield and they top left. Knocked out and Metacham going 2v3 again. You love to see it. Good game. Well played. My goodness, Nogdal and Medi going 2v3 back to back games. Quagsire is like, what is going on here? Let me see the field for once. And here we go. Nogdal, uh, mirror matchup here on the lead. So I usually will just play out the zeros and see whose IVs reign supreme. That's just how I tackle Nogdal leads. I know Medicham uh, in the back, perhaps even up a shield, lays waste to this entire league. So I'm not worried about it. And uh, we're just going to trade Sky Attacks until one of us is gone. That's how it seems to be playing out. They're not giving up a shield. We are winning this CMP, which is very interesting. So they may have a very, very highly ranked Noctowl. I know ours is pretty darn good as well. We've got a rank 21 here. So theirs must be in the top 10. Has to be. Uh, we're winning. We don't win very many CMP ties. So I was uh, quite pleased to see that. But they get the wing attack down. Holy smokes.
What is going on with this knocked owl? My goodness, they've got a beast of a knocked owl. Hats off to them. So going to come in with Quag to soak this. Um, obviously, we don't want to give them an early shield advantage, and Medi would be taking super effective. So just going to come in with Quagsire and see what comes of this. Knocked Owl can often have a Metachim of their own as well as a Lantern in the back. But no, they've got their own Quagsire. Very interesting. This is, uh, so far, this is looking like a, a mirror team, perhaps. Uh, very interesting. We do have the energy lead, but we are at a health disadvantage and no one is giving up shields thus far. So just going to rip off these mud bombs just as fast as we can. Um, I'm wondering if this is a mirror team or if this is a, another content creator's team. I know um, someone else put out another Quagsire Knocked Owl Core, and I believe it runs uh, Swampert, I believe. I know it was a double Mud Boy line, so we're going to catch this on the Metacham and get ahead on energy and look to go for a full farm down here on this Quagsire. Really load up on energy. I'm not sure if it's my team or another content creator's. Oh, it is. It is. It's another content creator's team. It's a double mud boy line. Let's see who's knocked out Quagsire Core Reign Supreme. Holy smoke. Shields are still even. Our health is severely compromised, but my goodness, Metacham is putting in work. If you run Metacham and play it the right way, it can pull off some absolute miracles. And the Swampert is, uh, does have the back-to-back. We're actually going to put up a shield here because the counters are really adding up. Going to look to grab this final shield with an ice punch here. I am expecting the shield. And now we're just going to immediately go back into our own Quagsire. We, I knew that we were just too off from our Mud Bomb. We really need to get some damage in on this Swampert. And they cannot farm down. So that's one of the upsides to the non-shadow. They're forced to throw. They cannot farm down. We were going to make it to another mud bomb. And uh, this is just basically nighty-night sleep tight for them. We counter this thing down. We counter that thing down. Holy smokes. Maybe they should get off of those other channels and hop on over to this one. They might uh, actually win with their knocked out Quagsire Core. We say bye-bye to the annoying Swampert. And Matty is left standing in the end. You absolutely love to see it. Good game. Well played. Oh, it's so nice having Quagsire injected into the meta with the newly buffed Mud Bomb added to its move pool. And here we go. Positively, Toxicroak. Very interesting. Quite spicy, to be honest. And they tried to catch onto a Lantern. We held onto that energy and we meet this with our Meta Jam. Could have come in with Quagsire as well. Um, either one works, but um, we elected to come in with Medi because if we don't get the alignment we want, we can still align Quagsire onto that Toxicroak, which does take super effective and we do outpace. So this is fine as well. They go for double surf on us and we are going to fire right back with a psychic here and they let it go. Beautiful. So now we will look to put the pressure on and go for the ice punch here and see what they want to do. Um, if they want to give up a shield, that's fine. But no, they let it go. Okay, so now we're going to see what they want to come back in with. They may want to come back in and counter down with the Takas Crook. No, they've got another poison type uh, coming in the form of Golbat in the back. A lot more Golbats I've been seeing lately. Very interesting. So I'm wondering what I should do here. I like to come in with uh, Quagsire because we do resist the potential poison fangs here, which is that's what they're doing. They're throwing poison type on our ground type. Very interesting to see. And we can hit this thing for super effective with a stone edge or at the very least threaten a shield here. And uh, we're just going to let all this go. We're basically sacking our Quagsire. Soaking all the damage and going to fire off the Stone Edge here and see what they want to do. They shield. Very interesting. Going to uh, just try to throw on awkward timing in between their wing attacks just so that they cannot catch the resisted Stone Edge onto their Toxicroak. And we grab the final shield, so now we're going to bail into our Noctowl and let this Poison Fang go. You always want to let the first one go if you can. Uh, because the second one is going to be doing more damage with the lower defense. And we did hit a uh, Shadow Ball. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I guess we just wanted to really chunk some health. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to shield up the second Poison Fang here. That's going to be doing more damage and expecting the Toxicroak to come back in here. And they do. 
Gonna shield up the potential sludge bomb here. Uh, they should go sludge bomb, but they don't. They go mud bomb. A mud bomb bait on a knockdown is quite risky, but it does not matter. We make it to the sky attack, and we're saying bye bye to the toxic croak. And now I believe I'm looking at these wing attacks. We can wing attack down in time. Knockdown still as strong as ever in the Great League. You'd love to see it. Good game, well played to our opponent. Oh man, I was thoroughly enjoying Quagsire on team number one from my top three best Quagsire teams for the Great League. And here we go, Altaria. So the way I play Altaria leads is I will just soft lose lead because Altaria, nine times out of ten, will have at least one Steel type in the back. And that is great news for our two Pokemon. And uh, with that in mind, Noctowl is not going to be of much use. So you can comfortably soft lose lead here, generally. That's generally how it goes. 99% of the time they have to have a uh, steel type usually coming in the form of Reggie Steel because it, it, it provides perfect coverage. They cover each other's weaknesses perfectly. Reggie Steel protects it from the ice in the in the um, uh, ferry, while Altaria protects it from the fighters. So we do let that go, grabbing a shield in the process and gonna come in with Metajam and look to take out this Altaria here. Gonna shield up the sky attack, evening up the shielding scenario, and look to go for the ice punch, which will definitely KO the Altaria. Just gonna overload a little bit. And we are going to look to take out the Altaria here, but they shield, holy smokes. That was very interesting. I was not expecting to see that. So they are gonna force a second shield here. Very interesting play by our opponent, and they make an aggressive play into their own Medicham. So Charm just doesn't exist for this trainer. Very interesting. I'm um, going to fire off the Psychic here and really chunk on the Medi. Let them throw theirs because I'm reading that there's a Steel type in the back. So we're going to let this go. It will not quite KO, but just about. And now it is Quagsire time. We wanted to get this within Mud Bomb range. We do get to this Mud Bomb, and this should KO the Metacham here. As tanky as Metacham is, this has Stab. We say bye-bye to the Metacham. And now... Bring out that steel type. That is totally what we're reading. That is what has to be in the back. It's not a steel type. It's a Blastoise. Hello. What is this? That is exactly what I was thinking at the time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is not good for us. We have no shields. Holy smokes. They've got a Blastoise behind the Altaria. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is over. <laughs> and they make the unnecessary catch. Oh my gosh, we're getting spiced on with a Blastoise in the Great League. Oh my gosh, how awful. Yeah, this is over. There's nothing we can do here. Oh my goodness, got spiced on. Hats off to them. You don't see that every day. Good game, well played to our opponent. Oh, I had a blast with Quagsire. I just can't wait to get my hands on a Shadow. That is what I've really got my eye on. But the non-Shadow puts in work as well, as we saw in this video. And here we go, Ar Ariados lead. That's a beautiful lead for us. And they, they safe swap a Reggie Ice. Holy smokes, the spice continues in the Great League. You'd love to see it. We tank one of any moves, so we're going to let this go. It is the Blizzard with Stab. Doing about 70% or so, and we're just going to look to... Yeah, we can't quite counter down. Going to throw the Ice Punch here. It is resisted, but in the Great League, this should definitely be enough to KO the Reggie Ice, or Reg Ice, I should say. Uh, flipping switch with Medi, you'd love to see it. They come back in with the Spider, and we're going to fire off the Psychic and either threaten to do a lot of damage or grab a shield. We grab the shield. That is beautiful. We will make it to another uh, Psychic, so they are forced to throw here. Uh, all they need is a Cross Poison. Yeah, they do throw the Cross Poison. And now we can align our Owl on the Spider. And they've got another Reggie in the back. Oh, we had the perfect answer. This is why Quagsire comes in so clutch with the newly added Mud Bomb for these Steel types here. They do let the first one go, and we do tank a Focus Blast from a Reggie Steel in the Great League. No problem, we let that go. Holding on to two shields here, and we will look to overload and play to just shy of their Focus Blast and look to fire off this Mud Bomb, see what they wanna do. Uh, they do let it go. They, I think they realize, yeah, it's, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Oh, uh, we, we got we got one on the spice this time around, and they do let that go. Oh my gosh, nearly one-shotting, and they do top left. Yeah, not going to happen for them, unfortunately, but good game. Well played to them nonetheless. 
And that is the team, my friends. How about team number one for my top three best Quagsire teams in the Great League? This team is the best Quagsire team you can possibly run. It absolutely puts in the work. Metacham and Noctowl, so powerful together. So powerful that they were able to go 2v3 in some of these battles, uh, not allowing Quagsire to even see the field, my goodness. So the dynamics of the team, Noctowl, weak to steel. Obviously, we've got two excellent steel-type counters, much more of a balanced uh, team. Uh, Quagsire and all other mud boys for that matter just pair beautifully with flyers they protect it from their only weakness of grass you round that out with a very powerful uh, third option in the back coming in the form of Metacham guys that's a recipe for a lot of success in the Great League but guys I had a blast I hope you all enjoyed as always I thank you for watching and keep up the grind thank you guys